Hello and welcome to the Backyard Art School. My name is Julia and I'd like to welcome you to this week. Um, it's a Monday and I'm just setting up the studio for my Monday afternoon class. Uh, and with this, the theme of this term, I just want to show you where we're up to as far as our face-to-face -face classes at our studio. Uh, so what we're up to is each student um, has had the opportunity to bring in their favorite object. So this could be a toy, what they like to play with. Um, it could be uh, anything really that they really love. Um, and with the younger students, I usually get them to uh, just bring one uh, object because they'll just focus on the one object, how to paint it and go through the process of the layers. Uh, and with the older students, they're able to have a create a still life of something with a few objects um, that is a representation of what is important to them. So when we when I talk about um, objects, favorite objects, usually with the young younger students um, and also some of the older students, actually the um, will bring in a toy uh, or something, and it's really lovely because you'll see um, just a real little insight of what's important to them at that at this time in their lives. Uh, I've had students who have been uh, attending my art classes uh, throughout primary school and then into high school and it's been fascinating to watch um, the different focuses that they've had throughout um, their life. Uh, for, once, for instance, one student, um, she was greatly into dancing uh, when she was younger, so her first couple of uh, still lives were of first her, her ballet shoes and then she had tap shoes and now she's um, doing a still life um, of an interior of her bedroom because she's now in high school so it's a lovely uh, quite more advanced but uh, it's a lovely sort of still life that represents her and it's um, of her desk so um, these are all things that I, I help students paint um, and why I think it's really important um, subject for children uh, to draw like if you look through the history of still lives it can vary um, to any sort of objects but I think that the uh, favorite object is really relates to the children and it usually relates to toys like I've had a lot of students bring in uh, Minecraft um, their, their Lego and so forth um, or their favorite sports like a, they brought in a basketball so there's like various things but um, one of the things that I w am demonstrating for the students was showing them the process of how to make their um, objects become artworks on canvases um, is this lovely sort of uh, huggy toys which I think is really lovely as a representation of a favorite toy to paint um, because um, it's something that ev I think everyone uh, ever, ever since they've been a baby has had that first toy that they were given as a as a child or young baby and that toy has been with them when they were in a cot um, and growing up and they've always had that toy and I asked my mum as well uh, for this video just as an example do you have a toy um, that you were given as a child and, uh, and she said yeah she got this beautiful old teddy bear that she pulled out isn't that gorgeous um, he's about 56 Oh, how old is he? About yeah, he'd be about 56 years old. My mum, she got him when he was she was 20 years old. Um, she had a, a a relatively strict upbringing, and so she didn't really have any toys when she was younger. But she when she was about 20, um, she went out with some friends, and they actually gave her this t teddy bear. And you can see it's like all worn on the face and so forth. Um, and you know she's loved this toy and she's always had it and it's like a it's an heirloom and it's something that she'll pass on um, to maybe my son or or my sister's um, children um, but it's just you know something which is really sentimental value it's been with you throughout your life and it has literally given her comfort um, you know when feeling down or whatever just to you know give a hug to something that's cuddly um, and so that's why I was really drawn to uh, one of my students who brought in their cuddly toy which was this lovely crocheted toy 
and you can just see the love of it like you know it seems like a very simple I don't, don't I think you can see the photograph it's a very simple toy but um, you know the way that it's been handmade and it's been crocheted and it's just like you know got so much love um, and so much craftsmanship that that's gone into it um, I was really drawn to uh, show this as one of the demonstrations for one of my classes that I'm teaching this week and um, and the thing is it's like you know, once you've actually painted the shape and form and know the tonal, um, how to create the tonal variations with creating the shape and form of the teddy bear, then you start to work on um, the surface texture of the stitching and usually I work with three tonal variations of the stitching um, and it's the way that you apply that texture of the, um, the teddy bear that's been crocheted. It doesn't have to be exact. But you can see I can create quite a lovely uh, representation of the bear and this is what I teach my students from 6 um, to 12 years old um, and then also the high school students as well. So background which may be just focused on the shadow of it laying on a table or they want to create their own sort of background which they're, they're welcome to do like stem into their imagination. Um, and sort of paint in some sort of like I've got uh, some students that brought in a toy uh, cheetah and it was a keyring and I we photographed it and then it was blown up onto a larger format um, but in the background he didn't want just a plain background of um, like this he wants to have uh, actual jungle for his cheetah so he's actually created his own beautiful jungle that he drew first and now all I am um, showing him is a process of how to do the basic, paint the basic shapes um, in, then also create the shape and form through tonal variation, and then uh, lastly how to do the surface texture of fur or the fabric of the toy, um, or it could be like Lego, so someone's doing a Lego motorbike, and I do the same process where I show them how to make it so it's lovely and shiny, um, how to paint the reflection of the light to make it look like it's really nice sharp um, shine lines and so forth that will represent the plastic and the way that it reflects the light. Uh, so these are all things that I'll show them how to paint their objects and so when they actually have their objects on canvas it's just a lovely sentimental um, painting or memento that they'll have um, at home which will just you know sort of spark um, a memory um, and it's something that they've loved as a childhood and I'm sure it's something that they'll continue to love uh, when they're an adult um, as a painting so I think it's a lovely theme uh, for all my students to um, to have and I do change things over where I will um, want uh, with our first term we may focus on fruit and vegetables um, as a still life um, and then I will show both the younger students uh, different techniques of how they can develop that still life um, and also the older students how they can develop theirs or be still life of flowers so we do go through the traditional um, still lives and themes because it is always beautiful you can see behind me my mum even now keeps on painting even, she, even though she's an abstract artist she also loves painting flowers and still lives of flowers because that's sort of, it's a large part of her inspiration um, and on that note as well um, this week I will be filming um, the red poppies workshop this week so this is usually a class that my mum facilitates herself for our Easter school holiday workshops but um, as I said in the previous video my mum is um, is having hip surgery so at the moment she's in a lot of pain so I'll be teaching those classes and um, this Thursday she's going to be just showing me um, the workshop and I'm going to be actually creating this workshop which is just here I'll be actually creating this workshop um, as a um, can you see it? yeah so I'll be working creating this workshop this is actually um, one of this is actually this painting is uh, by a girl called Gemma she painted this when we ran this workshop uh, about oh it'd be about eight years ago or six years ago um, and she didn't she forgot to pick it up so Gemma if you're out there 
I won't say your last name, Gemma A. If you're out there, come pick up your artwork. It's still here at our studio. <laughs> She's forgotten. She Shimitri is like now about 25 years old. <laughs> And it has a career somewhere and I'm just showing her her artwork. But the demonstration that we have, um, I've also do obviously a, a prototype as well. So we paint the prototype and then that's the students um, actual artwork that they created from the Easter school holiday workshops. And I am also going to be um, making or creating this, filming this workshop this week. Uh, and it's going to be for our online members. So you'll be able to see the techniques um, for how to create the beautiful flowers and the lovely um, petals um, and all the layers as well to create this um, with the online classes that I have for the members. So yeah, that's what I'll be working on this week. Um, we also have um, the Easter School Whole Age Workshop. So if you didn't see last our last YouTube video, it, it lists everything that we're going to be teaching um, with online as well as our face-to-face -face classes. Um, but um, going back to what we're actually teaching today and as you can see I really love to show the depth of how you can um, really develop uh, a painting of, of your favorite objects. So usually um, with how I teach I will teach a dry brush method of developing the different tones um, of the fabric or the fur um, after I've created this, 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 what I'm talking about at the moment. Um, if you're an artist yourself, you literally understand these terminologies, but this is something that I'll go more in depth with um, as I will be filming these classes for next year for the online members. Um, but this is going to be a, um, what I teach is you, you can see I haven't touched, painted this area of the body, but with developing this lovely teddy bear, which has been crocheted, um, you can see all the beautiful stitching and so forth. So you don't have to go in there with a micro brush and to be like every little stitch sort of thing. It's actually, there's an easier method of doing that. And that's what I show my students of how to develop that just by using a dry brushing technique, uh, recognizing where the um, different tonal variations are and how much of each of those tones to apply um, with those, um, with that, with that. So it's, it's both, um, I basically create a base coat, which creates the shape and form of the head. So you can see the shadow of the face and the shadow of the pores and where the light is coming up. So the light is really important for the first part um, of understanding the or creating the illusion of form. If this was just like a flat painted with no shading or anything, it's going to look really uh, two dimensional, uh, really flat. It would just look, um, yeah, it wouldn't look, look anything like this. It would just look like a cartoon character. Um, if you didn't want to create it as a three dimensional form, which I teach my students how to do with the fabric with um, shading. I next go into then going through each of the, I think there's about three different tones for the fur, but also things like the nose, the eyes. Um, if I just like painted it as like a, a black dot with no, no other fur going over it, it's gonna look really like cartoon style. So those are sort of the things that I'm teaching. Even the most simple things, that looks really simple, yeah? And you'll find that when you're doing any object painting, the most simple things are usually the most hardest things to do, or they look hard to do, um, because the simple things you want to you want to show all of the lovely um, surface texture of the lovely crochet and the stitching, but you don't want to be doing every single knot. You just want to like sort of gesture with your brush strokes, uh, creating those lovely um, textures of the fur, uh, or sorry, of the um, crochet. Um, and that's the same with any other toys, which um, some students have brought in furry toys. So also how, what sort of brush strokes would you uh, create for or do for this bear? So I'll go through the steps of how to create the texture of this fur. So it's, it is a very textural um, experience um, with the art classes that I'm teaching. I even have students who are doing a glass vase or glass objects. And that is a totally separate um, le lesson in itself. But luckily with my face-to-face -face classes, um, 
when I teach face to face there's a massive amount of knowledge that I share with my students because I am very quickly able to intuitively understand uh, the layers that are needed for that particular material um, I've worked with teaching um, a lot of these classes already so I know the process um, and it's really it's the process is as long as you understand the foundation of understanding um, the tonal variations for the colors uh, for the actual texture of the different materials whether it's glass, fur, crochet, plastic um, that is when you're just applying um, the, the brush with a different stroke yeah so um, those are the sort of things that I'll demonstrate to the students and then they're able to carry on and work over their whole object uh, with that same sort of application uh, depending on the on what it is um, so yeah so what I also do is that they will have their watercolor as well that they finish off which was one of the um, preliminary uh, exercises that we did at the beginning of the term so the first few classes we did was drawing drawing in charcoal um, tonal variations in black and white or grays you know black and white and grays and then we go into uh, learning how to use watercolors um, and then we stop with the watercolors to then start with the major work which is the acrylic painting but then if any students um, have already finished with the acrylic paintings they go back to the watercolors so there is a process of they're constantly working on something um, so yeah so that's for this week um, all that I'd like to share with you I will be filming um, the red poppy which is a great workshop that's going to be on our membership platform and I will be providing for our YouTube audience um, a lovely uh, art class that's already on the membership platform. I'm just deciding which one it is that you'd like to learn about. Um, and I will give options of that uh, later on um, as for what, which one you'd like to see, which one you'd like to do. And it'll be up to what you guys vote on as the one that you'd like to see that I will create. Um, but it's, it's really lovely to have your feedback so I really understand what you're wanting. And